All right, we have a podcast. I know. Well, I'm excited. I think we should sing a song about it. Okay, but we're both terrible, terrible singers. That's even better. The Child Free Connection. Plus. The Child Free Connection. Plus. The Child Free Connection. Child Free. Like that? Plus. I think we got it. <laughs> Here we go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yes. Um, Ready. All right, good. Because I'm going to start by saying that this first podcast has been a journey. <laughs> To so, say the least. So, oh my God. Okay. So the first time we recorded it. Yeah. Veronica, all the way through, by the way. All the yeah, way through. I think we spoke for about an hour or so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Veronica's mic was muted. The whole time. The whole time. Yeah. Such a rookie <laughs> move, but it but it happened. Yeah. And it happens. I mean, we've done things before. And that, then we just know. were like, you know what? Let's not do it today. And we took a break. And then we came back today this morning this morning mm -hmm. and we started recording All energized it. and ready to go and excited to do it again coffeed up yes. ready to go yes bright eyed and bushy tailed all those adjectives <laughs> or expressions whatever you call it and then we're like halfway through and they did a fire alarm test in our building that lasted i'm gonna say about half an hour yeah yeah <laughs> and we won't even talk about the times we've had to stop the podcast because our dog eddie was scratching at the door and it's been a whole thing yeah anyway so anyway here we here. are so episode 001 is up and running and what it's not episode one here's my thought i yeah. added the zero zero one because I'm optimistic and I'm hoping we get to a hundred episodes. Okay. What and, if we get to like a thousand? And of all, and before I also I've seen that on other podcasts. So Oh, is that like the fancy way to do it? Yeah, okay. I think so. All right. Episode zero zero one. Welcome. Welcome to the Child Free Connection. Yes. You sounded great. I need to work on my part. So ridiculous. <laughs> so ridiculous. Yeah. We actually, if any of you listening, if anyone's listening. Well, we have a we, couple of subscribers, we, early subscribers, yeah, like two yeah, people. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So uh, we, were, we were doing that when we made the trailer and it was so stupid and so ridiculous because we kept going over that. Yeah, we didn't how know how to end it. I was going to say plus. Was it going to be like plus or plus or plus? <laughs> so yeah, anyway. exactly. But I think anyway, you got it. we figured it out. Here yeah. we are. And we're going to talk about what the plus means in a little bit. But yeah. I just, you know, I'm so excited to finally launch this podcast. It's been a long time yes, in the making. Three times a charm. Yes, this is three times a charm of recording yeah. it. I'm, I'm, I really feel like this one's going to air. I <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think we say air anymore. Is it because we're, we're old? Is it going to? It might podcast? be because we're old. Because you're straight. <laughs> go live feels like be uploaded you know, uploaded yeah whatever it's called but mm -hmm. yeah we're thinking about like old school like radio yeah that's true so we'll just jump right in i am rick i'm 51 years old uh we live in austin texas and it's 104 degrees outside <laughs> It is. It is. It's summer in Austin. And it's actually, I just read the other day that we're like at day 31 of it being 100 plus. And yeah. This week is going to be the same. So, yeah, we are inside. Um, we, uh, my name's Veronica. I'm 47 years old. And we moved to Austin from New York City. I grew up in New York City my whole life. And I am a New York City girl and will ever be at heart. Uh, but, we decided to move out of here and I think it has something to do with our age, obviously. Like we just wanted to, for us, we felt like we had squeezed the juice out of New York and we wanted to try something different and slow things down, which I think life at least, maybe not our lives internally, but at least the outside externally, things are quieter and slower and we're really appreciating that. Yeah, for sure. I do. I mean, especially, you know, as I got older, you know, just the hustle and bustle of New York just started to wear on me. And this yeah, has been it's such a, a nice lot. change. It's yeah. a lot. It's a lot. And the thing is, when you're a New Yorker, you don't even know that you're just like in a constant state of panic <laughs> and go, go, go uh, until you move out. And then you're like, wait, why am I? I remember when we moved here the first you know, probably the first six to eight months or so, we were rushing around everywhere and we yeah. would catch ourselves and stop ourselves from moving so fast and walking so fast because we really didn't have a destination that we had to be at. Yeah. And we both would train ourselves to just relax. We had to slow walk, it down. Walk and like it's a, weird. We were rushing around during 
you know, COVID when everything was shut down and there was no one doing anything. Everyone's inside just, you know, drinking, watching Netflix. And we're like running around like it's trying to get like a something Tuesday, done. Yeah, yeah. A Tuesday in New York City, you know. Yeah, exactly. So for us, it was the right move. Uh, we just needed to take a break. And who knows how long we'll be here. We plan on being here for a while and see maybe where life takes us next. Next, But for now, we're here. We love it. And it also has a special meaning because we started the Child Free Connection here. And now we're starting this podcast. And yeah, it's been great yeah, so far. Yeah, and let me set the stage. Yeah. Um, you can view this podcast on our YouTube channel. Yes. But um, we are, for those who aren't watching this, we are shooting this podcast and recording oh, it yeah. in our kitchen. Yes. Yes. This, we live in a very small one bedroom yeah. and we're doing it from our kitchen yeah. for a couple reasons. One, we felt like this worked the best. And two, we don't cook. So it's always clean behind us. Just a really weird excuse. But so it's actually exciting because our kitchen has a purpose now. Mm -hmm. It's our our makeshift podcast. Our studio. 600 square foot apartment yeah. has a purpose. Our kitchen, at least that part of it. <laughs> Yeah, um, exactly. Exactly. So we're sitting on stools. We've activated our core because we have no back and we're going to use this as a workout too. But, um, yeah. but let's get into it. So I first want to say that I'm very excited about this podcast for several reasons. Um, but the one thing that we promise from this podcast is full transparency, honesty, being unfiltered and you're yeah. going to get the real us for yes. sure. Yes. Would you agree? A hundred percent. And I think that because we're a bit older and, and it's true and people would tell me all the time and, and you read about it all the time. And when we get into our sixties and seventies and eighties and nineties and whatever, but they've always said that the older you get, the less you care about <laughs> what other people think or the less you care about if you're presenting yourself in the right way or whatever, all that stuff that takes up space becomes less and less and less. And I think that you and I are both in a place where like, look, this is it. This is who we are. This is what's going on. And you're going to get the good, the bad and the ugly and all that. Yeah, I completely agree um, that as you get older, you know, you just don't have time to care, I think. Yeah, you, you, I think that's really what it is. It's like you're, you know, you're just in a different phase of your life, and you're just focused on things that are more important. So, what uh, thinking about? I mean, I, you know, I come from a place where I used to care so much about what other people think when yes. I was a lot younger. And um, as I got older, I can promise those who are younger than us listening to this that you, it does get easier if if you're one of those people that struggle with that. So why don't we share how the Child Free Connection started? Yeah. So I guess, first of all, we have to say that the Child Free Connection has been around for a few years. And we, what originally motivated me for this idea was when I posted a picture of me and Eddie on my personal Instagram account. And I remember that I posted around... Uh, it was maybe two years or so ago around Mother's Day. And I posted a picture of me and Eddie because I felt like I really wanted to express how happy I was to be his mom and how he wasn't a replacement for a child and how grateful I was for choosing this child-free path after, after going through my personal journey of 10 plus years of trying to figure out if this was for me, if I wanted to not have children. And yeah, I just wanted to share it with, and I posted it with zero expectations or it was just like an honest moment I was having. I remember that post. Yeah. I remember it. And, uh, and, and the response was, Overwhelmed. It, oh yeah, it was really weird. It was just because I wasn't used to getting a lot of response from strangers. It was just usually like friends and family responding and, and coworkers and just people that I knew. And there was such a response from strangers, but mostly on DMs. And I remember it, we were in an old apartment and I was sitting on the couch, had a little dim light on, and I was just reading through these messages. And it was women from all over the world telling me that they felt the same way or that they were hoping to feel that way, that they were still struggling with their decision, that they were tired of people telling them that their pet was a replacement child and uh, just being really vulnerable and opening up to me. And I just felt 
hmm, I was just kind of like, this is interesting. Yeah. And, and I didn't do anything with it at the time, but I just, it really hit me. It really hit me. And I, and I just made me think of, wow, this is a, this is a conversation. This is a conversation that needs to be had. Yeah. yeah. And I remember when you told me, and I, there was some confusion. I didn't really understand that there was a conversation about this. Yeah, exactly. And I think we had a brief conversation about it. And then we were all in the pandemic. And, of, and a lot of the focus was on remote learning. And I mean, you and I felt so bad for our friends with kids who had to work and try to teach their help their kids with school. It was, it was hard breaking at times the stories we were hearing, but there was a specific article and I can't remember, I think it might've been in the New York times that was talking about how parents had to uh, move away from some of their work tasks to help their kids with school and that child-free people were expected to pick up the slack. And I think that the word expected really just didn't sit right with me because I understood, and of course, we are more than happy to help parents during this situation, during this time. Of course, yeah, yeah, and but the idea and the concept that child-free people have nothing else going on in their life, or other responsibilities, or mental health issues, or just uh, anything that they were required to do this because, well, they don't have kids, so what else is going on, right? So that didn't sit what, right with me. And I know that we had that conversation too. And yeah, yeah. And I understood that. I mean, I was listening to a lot of my friends during that time when, yeah. when the pandemic was, 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 you know, when it was really starting at the beginning, right? March, April, even May of 2020. And my friends were just like confused on how to handle their children on a day-to-day -day basis because they were in this routine. So I remember relating to that part because I was hearing a lot from my friends about that. Yeah. So it was just, um, I felt like there was a lack of balance between support and expectation. And I think also because it was a pandemic and a lot of us had more time than normal. It, I mean, you saw all the books I got. I mean, they were like, I was covered in them like on the floor. Yeah. You and dove head dove deep into this head topic. Into this topic because I think the reason was because I thought in my, mind for whatever reason i look back and i don't know why i thought this but i thought okay i had gone through such turmoil turmoil and such and it, it was just it was just a hard journey for me and i thought well this was you know i'm older now i'm 47 this was during like my 20s early to mid 30s and uh actually even later um and and I was thinking to myself, young women cannot possibly be dealing with all the crap <laughs> that I was dealing with. And then the more I started reading, the more I started researching, it had really not moved forward so much from when I was experiencing it myself. And that I think was really the final straw of me saying like, okay, this is enough is enough. I'm ready to speak out on it. Although it took me a little while because I was a little like, okay, and this is the mindset that a lot of you may be in or have experienced at this point, uh, at some point to say like, okay, we're going to start this account about the fact that we don't have kids. And of course I thought about like, what is my mom going to say? What is my sister going to say? What is your family going to say? Like, why are they bothering to do this? Who cares? And we, and I just want to say that I felt like we got some of that. Like it was a, very, oh. it was confusion. I mean, if I was confused, obviously I think our surrounding family was 100%. a little like, we're like, what are you doing? Yeah. Doing? Yeah. It was almost um, like, oh, okay. Okay. Good luck with that. Um, so I had to let go of all of that, right? Because I, I said to myself, oh, I'm doing what other women are doing, right? I'm, 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 I'm basing a decision on what other people's reaction is going to be. And I remember talking to you about it and saying like, if, if that's how I'm going into it or we're going into it, then that's then it's pointless right because we have to go into it saying like we're going to be honest we're going to really show and say what this child free lifestyle is like without the worry of what what our families or our friends think and i don't know i know that you were concerned about that too yeah well i mean i thought of it as you know 
you, when you were saying you're, you know, are you prepared to be in front of camera? And do, I've been, that was, you know, I'm a producer and I'm used to being behind the camera. That's what I do. And I was my, you know, I offered up my services. <laughs> like, why don't I just create all the content and you run with this? Because again, at the beginning, I really didn't get it. You know, I didn't really understand yeah, you where it was why headed. Yeah, you people would want to hear from people yeah. who don't have children. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and also our personal journeys were so different, which we'll talk about later. But I think that that's where your confusion stemmed from. Like, why would anyone want to talk about this yeah, anymore? And you really yeah. did a good job in defining what the Child Free Connection was going to be all about. All right. So tell everyone how you came up with the core intention of what the Child Free Connection was going to be up. Yeah, well, we came up with it, right? Remember yeah. when we sat down together? Well, it took a little while. We were really like wrapping our heads around I know. everything. And you we did an amazing job. You did so much market research and really figuring out exactly what this should be for us. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I commend you on that. I mean, that was a lot. And I watched some of that market research. But why don't you go into exactly what that process was about and let everyone know? Yeah. And I think for us, it was important. And even for me, and I knew it would be important for you to just be really clear on, I mean, to the conversation has been going on for a long time, right? But like, what could we add to it? And I thought that there was a lot that we could add to it. And the first thing that we both said off the bat was connection because we had spoken to so many people and in my market research, there was so there was such a lack of community with other child-free people. Um, and people just said, I don't have any child-free friends. I don't know any child-free people. I feel isolated. I feel alone. I feel like an outcast. All my friends are having kids and I'm not being included. If I'm included, I don't really want to be there because all they do is talk about their kids. So connection was the first word that we both agreed was really necessary, which that's why it ended up being the child free connection because we felt so strongly about that. Yeah, connection was the first thing that really made a lot of sense to me, you know, because I was personally experiencing that. I mean, as my friends were, you know, having kids, I felt more isolated and my social life started to take a downturn and I struggled with that. It was really hard for me, you know? So I just assumed this is the way it happens is your friends have kids and I'm not, ha I don't have kids. And you know, this is what the cards that I'm dealt. And I kind of looked at, down on myself. It was not good. You know, I was in a bad place. So when you said, we're going to call it the child free connection, I'm like, this is great. I'm going to get to meet other people that share right. similar, you know, yeah. that don't have kids and we can share similar experiences and you know, right. what our life day to day looks like. Yeah. And at the time we didn't really know how exactly we were going to yeah. do it. Uh, we just were like, let's do it. And I remember um, specifically during that time, someone had actually quite a few people were saying like, what is it? What is it? Like, what is it exactly? What is what are you going to create? What are you going to like? There were so many questions coming at us and we were like, we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're we like, we know. don't know. We're going to figure it out. We're going to figure it out. Take this but ride. that's the best process, in yeah. my opinion. You know, yeah. when you when you go in with like, this is exactly what I what I'm going to do. I mean, yeah. there's that old expression, you know, you make plans and the universe laughs. Yeah. You know, it's just like, yeah. you got to it needed to kind of organically yeah, it needed happen. To come, yeah, we definitely didn't have all that. And then the second thing that we wanted to do, but this actually, I guess if you want to call it a plan, our plan was um, just setting intentions, right? Because we did do that at the beginning. So it was to connect people. And the second intention that we set was to support. And that one was just really meaningful deep in my heart because I personally experienced uh, lack of support while I was making this decision. And I also knew that, the, you know, after my market research, that so many people needed it. So that was really important to us to support others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love the approach that you had. You know, you really wanted to find out, you spent the time talking to folks all over the world. I should mention this isn't just yeah. in a you know small circle, like <laughs> yeah. everywhere. You put it out there on, on yeah. social and yeah. got a gr bunch of responses. Yeah. And you spend hours talking to them and really getting, you know, the good and the bad of this lifestyle and what that looks like. And um, yeah, I mean, really that's, you know, all of the, in all of our intentions and what we're doing is coming from those conversations, which is, which is really interesting, you know, 
when I look back on it, because I remember watching a lot of these conversations and that you shared with me and just, I was, you know, at times I was laughing. I was, you know, there were times where I watched someone, I was like, wow, I totally feel that way. And I could, it was very relatable. And then there were times where I was crying because there's a lot of people that there are challenges with this lifestyle. And that's why we created the support part of, of the Child Free Connection. Yeah. And I really understood what you meant by support after you shared what people were going through. You know, yeah. it was it was a really eye opening for me. Yeah, exactly. Because there is a huge part. There's a big percentage of people that there's the people that have known really early that they don't want to have kids. And that's fabulous for them. And then there's people that, that know really early that want to be parents. And that's fabulous for them. But there's a whole sea of people in the middle that don't have a lot of clarity. And even if you're leaning towards a child free life, there's a lot of things to work through and reflect on. Um, so yeah. And then we also, because we love and have so much gratitude for a child free life, we wanted to make sure that we were going to celebrate it and celebrate ourselves, celebrate our lifestyle, celebrate the people that we brought into this community and just, um, yeah. Yeah. And in this podcast, um, we're going to really discuss why it's important to celebrate this child free choice. Yeah, it definitely is. Absolutely. And the important thing is that we added the plus, which is uh, the heart of this podcast, because we're always going to have the celebration and the support uh, and the connection in our space and in this community. But the plus was pivotal for us to add to that, right? Well, for me, it was, you know, and this was a big revelation when we had our in-person event here in Austin. When you're talking to other child-free people, it's interesting. I, you know, I didn't, I went in with really no expectations on what that event was going to be like. And I did, was like, are we going to sit around and talk about not having kids and all that other stuff? And it was the opposite of that. You know, we just, we all got into a room and we just had a great time discussing about what we do individually with our time now that we don't have the responsibility of a child and they aligned in so many ways. And I found that fascinating. And that's when I really started, like, we need to, we need to create a podcast and talk about what this life path looks like, yeah. you know, every shine, day. Mm -hmm. shine a light on it yeah. and really explore because there are so sim so because there are so many similarities that I, that were very unexpected for me. I did not think that I would connect, no pun intended, with, you know, so many child free people mm -hmm. so easily. And yeah. to me, that was fascinating. Yeah, there was such a flow in the way. Um, and by the way, it, it was a party. It was a celebration. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like a conference and a room or anything like that. It was a celebration. And we and and to your point, it was so easy. Obviously, we were worried, like, are people going to talk to each other? Or are they not? But yeah. it was effortless, really. We didn't have to do anything. It was effortless. Yeah. Everyone, everyone was just, just everyone like, boom, just boom. Mingled and yeah. started talking immediately and got along immediately. And it was just so easy. And yeah, I mean, I agree with you. The commonalities, the interests, the way that we view life. Uh, the way that we want to work on ourselves, work on our relationships. So all that is different when you don't have kids. So that's what we really want to explore. Yeah, that podcast. was my aha moment. Yeah. That really was. It was mm -hmm. like, oh, I got it. You know, I, yeah. I can really understand why being in a community and having friends and connecting with people that are child free, why it's so important to my own personal happiness. And I think it's important that you build up that community as you go along through life at any age, if you start building up a community, you've made that choice not to have children. You want to have other people in your life because you don't have your traditional family there. You know, um, you can have your, you know, your mom and your dad and so on and so forth. But I think it's really important that you become part of a community. And I really felt like I had found my tribe at that point. You know, it was like, wow, this is, this is fun for me. And I'm more of an introvert, as you know. So for, for me to be in that space, in that, at that event, in that celebration and be able to flow so naturally was, was really an eye opening experience for me. So. So there's another thing we want to share and we've talked about it and we want to lead by example, because we, do it sometimes 
as well. It slips in there. In we want to freely speak without having to say, but of course we love children. But of course we respect parents. That's a given. But everything under the sun. Because I do feel that by always have to justifying, by always having to explain what you mean, it takes away from our power of being child free because it lessens it lessens the pride because we're saying, oh yeah, we're child free, but you know, maybe we'll change our minds later or but maybe I'll adopt later. But you know, I my friend, I have nieces and nephews and I you know, we it's it's very common for people to do that. Don't you I mean, call I, that the butt trap or yes, something? I call it the butt trap. Which is a horrible expression. I call it the bud trap. Um, I've done videos on it before. So I want to try to not do that here. So if a parent is listening for whatever reason, we are we are speaking to the child free community in this podcast. And we don't want to have to continuously say, but this, but that, because we have nothing but love and respect for people's choices. We strongly believe that everyone should do what is best for them and what feels good to them. So, so yeah, there it is. There we, it is. We're, we're, we're not going to bring it up there. ever again. Episode zero <laughs> zero one, and then then we yeah, move on. Exactly. So we don't say but this and this and that. It's there. It exists. Yes. Uh, we just don't want to say it every time because we also want to, like I said, lead by example and know that it's okay to express our opinions and our voice without having to justify it with a bot. So why don't we tell everyone how we met and how we ended up living a child-free life as a couple? And I want to start by saying that we've known each other for 25 years, but we've only been together for seven, which is a very interesting story. It is. So why don't you begin? Sure. So I graduated college in 97. And at the time I went straight to work for MTV and my internships had all been in television. So I knew that's what I wanted to do. But at that time, I, I guess MTV now is known more for like reality shows or I don't know. I don't even know anymore. Yeah, really I don't know. Watch There's it. no more music <laughs> yeah, on MTV exactly. anymore. But at the time, it was the place to work. It was all music videos. It was all about music. And I just, I mean, I would watch it when I was a kid. And I just thought it was the coolest thing that people actually worked there and that that was their job. So I came in really excited. And when I started working, you had already been there for like a year or two. Yeah, I um, I got my internship right out of college and I had been there, I uh, started in 95. Okay, so. so you had been there a little while. And you came in in 97. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I just started working and the first... Um, year or so, I was an assistant to the person that you reported to. That's right. Right. And oh, we were also on the same floor and we saw each other all the time. Yeah. Well, I remember your first day when you walked in. And I know this sounds like a cheesy love story, but it is true. You walked in and I was just like, it was like the wind was blowing through your hair. <laughs> You were so different. You were this New York City girl. You know, I went to I was raised in Virginia and I went to school in North Carolina and I'd never been to New York prior to my internship at MTV. So I was working as an intern or actually I was working as a producer at that point. And you came in and I was just like, who's that girl? And you've shared that with me before. And it's it's funny, but you've also shared that you would come by my desk for no reason and just come to try to talk to me. And do you remember that, by the way, when no, I would do that? No, no. Yeah, so my, I don't my, know. Your strategy was off. Like, I'm not even sure what your strategy was. Oh, I'm was. the first person to admit my strategy was I had zero game. And my strategy at the time to get to know you was bring you my time card. And at the time, that's what you did. You had time cards you filled out. And that's how we got paid. And bring you my time card and ask questions about my time card. Like, hey, did I sign in the right place? Like, that was my game. It was so bad. And you'd be like, yeah, that's where you sang. You did a good job. Good. See you later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I'd I be mean, like, I, okay. Yeah. I mean, and as the years went by, I, I, I mean, I don't think anyone would know that you're flirting with them by the way that no, you approached no, me. No, in my head, I thought this was a good idea. Yeah, exactly. And then as the years went by, then 
after I was an assistant, as I got promoted, I moved over to the talent department and I was the on-air talent manager and you were a producer and the show called TRL, which at the time was huge. It was this live video countdown show that kids ran home to watch every day and we were in the middle of Times Square and every day there would be like tons of kids outside with signs because we would have these amazing artists right come every day and perform we had celebrities it was a crazy 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 time but we worked on that show together and we worked on other shows together and we were traveling all the time because we were doing spring breaks in Cancun we were doing packing up and doing beach houses so we were in each other's paths but i can i can't say that at any point i thought that you were interested in me i know no i I don't blame you for that i mean i really didn't come i didn't flirt with you is the way i thought i was flirting with right right exactly so nothing came of it and and i had a boyfriend at the time and i was also this like New York City girl. I loved going to clubs at the time. I was super into fashion. And yeah, you, you... you wore like leather skirts and fishnet <laughs> stockings. And you'd come in and you'd be like, I was at the club last night. And meanwhile, I'm like, oh, if I wore fishnet stockings to work. But, I think you I mean, did. I wouldn't put it past me either. So maybe. Yeah. 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 But anyway, yeah. yeah. And I was very different. You know, I was a you were crawler. Like, yeah, you were like in cargo shorts and like a, you know, yeah. whatever your your vibe was at the time. Even I knew at that point, like we are so different. I don't know how, what my in is here because <laughs> I can't dance. Right, I, and I went dancing I, almost every night. Yeah, I couldn't. Yeah. yeah, it was it was. I could see the, the writing on the wall that it was going to be a tough fit. Yes, so we went our separate paths. I have no clue that you were interested. But because at the time our our coworkers, we we were in the trenches with this job. We were all kids. It was the height. Um, well, not the height. MTV had very uh, had a lot of heights, but it was just a big moment in time, especially with TRL. So we all became very close, and we would have these reunions, not every year necessarily, but every few years, sometimes every year, and we would see each other. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we would flirt here and there, and then I also had bad strategy at that point where I would think like, let me have a couple drinks, and then I'll come over to you and I'll flirt, and I just remember that was just an epic fail as well. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know if I would even say that we were flirting at the time. I think we were just having conversations again. again. You were coming over to me to flirt, but I wasn't really picking up on that. No, and also we were in relationships. I got married. You were almost engaged. Then you got into another very long term relationship. So. We got together and we always just had a really good time together when we were talking and hanging out. Um, But, you know, life happened. We went our separate ways. And sometimes that's just the way it goes. I think the whole thing was, even though we weren't, quote unquote, flirting, or you didn't think we were flirting. I thought we were flirting. (laughs) I I was doing whatever it took to stay out of the friend zone. So when the opportunity presented itself. Right. Right. We you could, took it. I, I, well, yeah, yeah. It, that it would be open. That, yeah. that there would be. So I was like, I don't want to yeah. be friends with her, yes. but I, you know, but. Yes. And then we had this reunion and you didn't come and you almost always came and I almost always went. And by the way, I went to those reunions to see if you were there. And I'm, <laughs> that is true story. Okay. So we did it. Uh, I actually didn't believe any of this when you told me, but it was confirmed when we started dating and one of someone on your team had said that they would walk into your office and you would have my Facebook page open and you'd be looking. Oh my God. I mean, we said we're not, we we're going to be honest. And now I'm like a total stalker, but so it's you were true. like definite stalker vibes. Well, yeah. When Facebook came out and when we were having these reunions and Facebook came out, I remember being so excited because I was able, you know, you friended me. And then I realized you had a picture of us from 1997 up on your Facebook page. One of the three pictures that you had at the time. Well, and in my no, head, I'm to like, be clear, it was a photo album of maybe around 40 pictures and you happened to be one of them. I saw three, but we'll just agree to disagree. Please don't ruin my dream. That you were focused okay, on. Okay, so I put up your the picture of us on yeah. Facebook. You made but, it your background. Yeah. My picture of me and you. So anyway, that's, that's I when I was like, oh, wow, this guy's not necessarily lying to me. When you started telling me like, no, I've been pursuing you my entire life. And ask any of our friends, even now you can ask them. Yeah, that's true. I would always say, 
when the reunions were happening, is yeah. Veronica going to be there? Yeah. That was like my go-to comment. Do you know yes. Veronica's coming to the party? Right. I mean, right. That's, that was tr that's true. I don't even know if you, I don't think we've ever even talked about that. No, but I you, don't think so either. You can ask, yeah. ask, ask our friends. <laughs> so I guess we'll say you were stalking me for Full a long on time. Stalking. Uh, and, um, and then there was a reunion that you didn't come to. And at the time, Instagram had launched and I believe they were, it hadn't DM hadn't fully rolled out, but it had, it was fairly new, right? And I was very much into testing every tool that came out as far as social media is concerned, because actually that's what I ended up doing. I became a social media consultant, but I had DM'd you and I had, and I said, oh, why didn't you come to this last reunion? And that's how we started to chat. And you didn't know that what a DM feature was. And that wasn't, you know, people still weren't sure about the platform. So you just started chatting with me. You're like, oh, I didn't even know that we could talk to people in here. And I was just asking you like, oh, we should get together and catch up since we didn't get to talk to each other at the reunion. And you said, well, being that I'm single and I don't have kids and I can do what I want whenever I want, like it's up to you because I'm there. And I said, well, being that I'm single, I don't have kids and I can do what I want whenever I want i'm free too and your response was like what with like question marks exclamation points like stars bursts happy faces and then immediately before i even got to answer you you said oh i'm sorry are you okay yeah <laughs> Which i felt bad well i just did not want the opera like i said yeah i feel like i was just waiting for that opportunity right. and finally 20 yeah. years later or whatever, yeah. you know, it came. And so I wanted to take advantage of it, but I, I didn't take your feelings and, and I apologize for no, that. No, no, it was really sweet. I thought it was really cute. So anyway, we made a brunch date and we've been together ever since, ever seven since. years ago. Yeah, And just on our first date, we decided that because I was, I, we, I turned 40 when we were already dating. So I was 39. It was a few months before that we started dating. And we made it a point to be completely honest with each other. Yeah. Like, anything because we were both like hot, hot messes, messes. <laughs> we both said at the same time no, it's so true. at the time and we still to this day have a lot to work on ourselves and our relationship and everything but we were both very open and i think we were both just at the point like look this is what's going on take it or leave it like i'm not trying to spin a different story for you necessarily so on our first date we had we went back to your place to hang out and we had what we call the truth couch and we took turns on the truth couch and the other person could ask the person on the truth couch anything any question anything that you've ever wanted to know from the past anything that you wanted to know about the time we were apart so um so yeah that came up and you asked if i wanted to have children and i said absolutely not yeah and it was only recently that i found out you told me this like like two months ago or something that i found out that when i said i didn't want kids you thought in your mind what so i thought that well let me just back it up so you know i had been in a bunch of relationships i had been in a bunch of relationships where they had told me that they don't want kids. And then as our relationship progressed, like a year or so after, they'd be like, you know, I want children. So that had happened to me several times. Mm -hmm. um, not all my relationships, but yeah. some of them. Well, but it makes and sense. so I made an assumption like, okay, she doesn't want kids now, but in a year, she's probably going to want some kids. So that's, I know I never really told you that until recently. Yeah. But, um, but it's just really funny because it's like to, for me to think that someone's thinking, oh, she doesn't really know when, yeah. when I've had like 15 years of self discovery and yeah. like just really diving into this decision and being like really solid at it by the time that we met. But it's completely understandable. I understand what you're saying. Why yeah. you're like, all right, maybe, but not really. Yeah. So, yeah. So we ended up here we're living this child-free life and there's so much to talk about there's so much that we've learned there's so much that we want to share and yeah we hope that you take that ride with us and this is the place to do it yeah absolutely so thank you so much we finally got through episode zero zero one finally <laughs> we finally did it and uh yeah we uh hope y'all enjoyed it and we'll see you next time